Happy Holidays and uh, Merry Christmas to you, to those of you who have just um, celebrated the Christmas uh, season. Um, I want to come to you again tonight. It is the 27th of December, two days after Christmas. And uh, I must apologize, I had a uh, Christmas uh, message for you. Um, it was uh, on, the, on Jesus, our Messiah, or Jesus, our enemy. That was the title of the message, Jesus, our Messiah, or Jesus, our enemy, coming from John chapter 4, verses 25 to 26. Uh, it was sort of like an offshoot of First Samuel chapter 8, verses 1 through 8. And what I want to do uh, briefly for a few minutes is sort of like skim through um, what the message was about. It was a two-hour message, and I couldn't, um, if for some reason or another, my computer was not working uh, on that day, and um, technical difficulties, and it would not record the, uh, the voice. Um, my voice would not record. Of course, I blamed it on John MacArthur and Gabriel Franklin because they're the people that are uh, opposing me. Um, they're the only opposition that I have in the state of Washington. So naturally, my inclination is to is to is to give it to them because I felt like they might have been the ones behind it. But in any case, and for that, I want to draw your attention to um, to this to this issue that we have: Jesus our Messiah or Jesus our enemy. That's a question that I think uh, most Americans in modern day America want to um, want to answer. Was Jesus of Nazareth the Messiah who fulfilled the Old Testament prophecies, or was Jesus of um, Nazareth the enemy of the Jews and also the enemy of the nations? I think that's a question that most people um, would like an answer for, because you know every year we celebrate his birth at Christmas, uh, and at Easter time we celebrate his death and resurrection, but the reality is, um, I think the Jews, the Hebrews, Israel, um, walked away from the crucifixion and walked away from uh, his birth, his life, and his crucifixion, his death, um, and his resurrection, uh, in pointing out that he was not the Messiah that Isaiah had promised. He was not the coming king. He was not the deliverer. He was not the savior. Um, so it has been noted since the first century that 90% of the Jews, Israel, the 12 tribes, they didn't receive Jesus Christ as uh, their Messiah. No, they did not. They didn't believe that he uh, fulfilled the prophecies of Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 through 7. Uh, he was not the coming Messiah, the deliverer that would uh, deliver them from Rome, that would deliver them from the nations, uh, the tyranny of the nations, uh, and the Roman Empire under Caesar uh, at the time. So, um, to the Jews, Jesus was the enemy, and having made, uh, and he was the enemy that made the claim to be Messiah, uh, while the church exalted him, um, the Jews condemned him, um, and, and, and didn't believe that he fulfilled the Old Testament, uh, the, the promise of Messiah coming that was written in the Old Testament prophets. Um, but the church acknowledged him as Messiah and received him as Messiah. But in our generation, 2,000 years later, um, the question comes to us again. You know, is Jesus Christ the Messiah? Is he the King of the Jews? Um, that was a question that Pilate had asked if he was the King of the Jews um, when he was on trial. Um, was he the deliverer of Israel? Or uh, is he still guilty of blasphemy, um, making himself equal to God? Uh, and therefore was uh, well deserving of, of death. As, uh, as an enemy, right? Was he well deserving of death as an enemy? Was he really an enemy of the Jews? Um, the question can be answered. Um, if, we, if we go into, uh, into the scriptures, we can look up all the passages of, of the Bible that talks about uh, Jesus' messianic role. Um, we can probably um, look up all the verses that says that he is, and even his own claims that uh, he was Messiah and that he was Messiah. Um, we can look at the uh, Apostles' writings and see whether or not what the Apostles had written about him uh, concluded him to be Messiah. Um, after we're done today, um, we'll probably 
have a better idea of whether or not he was. Messiah, after we've looked through the scriptures and read some of the passages, um, we probably have a better understanding of, of, of his role as Messiah, as a deliverer. That's what a Messiah is. Messiah is a deliverer. He's a king. Um, you know, this whole idea of Christ's uh, messianic role puts the church uh, in a very difficult situation because here for the last 2,000 years, the church of Jesus have been um, celebrating um, his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, and his continued reign over the church um, as the Messiah, as the head of the church. Uh, and then now here's the very nation that he came from, uh, Israel, denying him as, uh, as the Messiah, denying him as the Lord of, of, and as the God of, of Abraham and as the, as the Lord of glory. Um, but as for Israel, they are still waiting um, for their Messiah. The church for 2,000 years have um, enjoyed the, the Lordship of Christ and rejoiced at the fact that Messiah has come and, and has caused the church to, um, to live in, uh, at peace with God and, and um, trusting in Him for salvation. But for the Jews, it's an unfortunate set of situation where they have, they're still waiting for Messiah to come. Um, I, have, I have asked, when I actually did this message, I had asked 20 questions. Uh, I'm going to actually skim through them, um, and I'm not going to go into them in depth. But um, I think it's, it, it would be good to just kind of um, look at these uh, questions and... and um, and look at some of the answers um, to this to this uh, mystery. Um, and Paul talks about this mystery of who Christ is in his uh, letter to the church at Ephesus. And the mystery has been revealed um, that uh, he he is the the one that uh, grants man entrance into the kingdom of God. Um, sinners, people who uh, sin, are to be grateful that Christ's um, came and died on the cross for their sin. Um, sinners are those who love to disobey and, 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 and basically deny God the right to rule over them. Sinners are those whose hearts are um, sort of like having a vine uh, twisted around your heart, a, a, a vine of, of lies. You know, there's the vine of truth. And Jesus says, I am, the, um, I am the vine and you are the branches. Uh, Satan is that vine that twists himself around the human heart and causes man to sin and to love the sin. And, 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 to, and, and what Messiah does is Messiah comes and Messiah cuts off the vine's ability to wrap itself around the human heart and causes man to sin with their heart lustfully. And so, people who are in that situation should be grateful that Messiah has come, and that through his scriptures and through what he has done in history, he can set man free. The first question that I want to ask is, what is Israel looking for when they are looking for Messiah? They're looking for a deliverer. They're looking for uh, a king that would come and deliver them from Rome and from the world's persecutions. Because remember, in the first century, the Roman Empire had taken over um, basically Europe, um, Middle East, and also parts of Africa. And so they, um, so Israel was looking for a deliverer, the deliverer that had been promised, the one that would set up his government as um, promised by Isaiah. But that's not what Jesus did. Um, but, and so that's what they were looking for, for a Messiah. They were looking for someone to, uh, to lead their army, to lead their nation, to lead them as a king. Secondly, why did they reject Jesus as Messiah? Because he did not remove Rome. He did not lead the nation. Um, he didn't form an army together um, and, and lead them against the Roman Empire, against the, 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 the legions and legions of, of, of Roman soldiers who uh, took over uh, Israel and the temple and Jerusalem and temple worship um, and, and taxing the Israelite people. Uh, the, the land that Joshua had given over to um, Israel was basically taken over by Rome. And so, as a result of that, the Jews um, were not happy 
at uh, the coming of Christ because that's not what he did. Um, the coming of Christ did not establish um, the freedom that they wanted from Rome's um, authority, and which is what they want. Um, what the, the coming of Christ did was to set them free from sin and from Satan. Question three, what is a Messiah? And it's a two-part question, what is a Messiah? And when was it prophesied that one was coming? What, was, uh, what is a Messiah? A Messiah is a deliverer, right? Uh, in this case, Messiah is a king, uh, a son of God. Um, and, uh, and when was it prophesied that one was coming? Um, it was prophesied through Isaiah the prophet. Um, in Isaiah 9, 6-7, Isaiah 59, 20, Romans 11, 26 to 27. Those passages of scripture basically gives you, uh, it, it, the, Paul quotes Isaiah um, as saying that Messiah was coming. And the Lord spoke through Isaiah to the Jews in that time, um, telling him that he was going to send and deliver. Now remember back in 1 Samuel 8, verses 1 through 8, uh, Israel had asked for a king. Um, the, the, the scripture, the passage says that, um, and it came about when Samuel was old that he appointed his sons judges over Israel. This is 1 Samuel 8, verses 1 through 8. Um, now the name of the firstborn was Jerob, and the name of the second, Ab Abijah. They were judging in Beersheba. His sons, however, did not walk in the ways, uh, in his ways, but turned aside after a dishonest gain and took bribes and perverted justice. And all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah, and they said to him, Behold, you have grown old, and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now appoint a king for us to judge us like all the nations. But the thing was displeasing in the sight of Samuel, when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in regard uh, to all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them like all the deeds which they have done since the day that uh, I brought them up from Egypt even to this day, and that they have forsaken me and served other gods, so they are doing uh, to you also. We get a verse 19, and again it says, uh, Nevertheless, uh, the people refused to listen to the verse of Samuel, and they said, No, but there shall be a king over us, uh, that we also may be like all the nations, that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. Um, and uh, verse 21, now after Samuel had heard all the words of the people, he repeated them in the Lord's hearing, and the Lord said to Samuel, listen to their voice, and appoint them a king. So Samuel said to the men of Israel, go everywhere, uh, every man to his city. Basically, um, Jesus is a fulfillment of that request. He, uh, even though God had given Israel uh, many kings, yet um, since they had requested for a human king, God came down in the form of Christ, and um, after this this request, um, God had given them a promise through Isaiah that he was coming, um, and Christ is a fulfillment. Um, that's what Messiah is. Messiah is the fulfillment of the request of the Jews uh, for a human king, um, and so they had received Christ. Um, so what is Messiah? Messiah is a deliverer, a king, um, in, in the context of... of um, of the New Testament, Son of God, um, and it was prophesied through Isaiah. We can go all the way back to Genesis 3 and see the, the, the promise that, that a son was coming, the seed of, of, of the woman was going to um, crush the head of the serpent. Uh, question 4, why did God promise the coming of Messiah? And um, it's a three-part question, why did God promise the coming of Messiah? Why did Israel need one? since they had a king, and what was the purpose of the first coming of Messiah? Um, why did God promise the coming of Messiah uh, to, deliver, to deliver them from sin? Not to deliver them from the nations, but to deliver them from sin. Uh, the messianic role is a spiritual role, not uh, it's, a, it's a spiritual role, not a, a physical role, where, like David, who was king of Israel, who sat on a throne, Jesus did the opposite. And um, man was full of sin, and therefore God sent them a spiritual leader to deliver them from that sin. Ephesians 6 uh, tells us that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the powers and, of darkness and, and spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. So, um, 
Biden God uh, promised the coming of Messiah uh, to deliver them from sin. Um, why did Israel need one? Uh, it was a spiritual deliverance, not a physical one like it is, uh, Egypt. Basically, uh, to deliver Israel, um, to deliver Israel from their sin. That's the reason why God had promised Israel one. Uh, their kings, David, could not. You know, you read Acts chapter two, and there's a full explanation there. Uh, David could not deliver Israel from sin. They could, he could deliver them from battle, but he couldn't deliver them from sin. And that's what Christ did. Um, and to, and what was the purpose of the first coming of Messiah? It was to establish his church. Matthew 16, 18. So Messiah came to establish the church, and what is the church? Those are the people who have been forgiven and who have been um, delivered from sin, delivered from Satan. The church are those people who have been delivered from sin and Satan. Uh, number five, what is an enemy? Uh, one who opposes, persecutes, hates, judges, uh, kills, uh, accuses, and destroys uh, one's life with misery. And I asked the question, what is an enemy? Because our t the title of our message is Jesus our Messiah or Jesus our enemy. Is Jesus Christ of Nazareth our Messiah in this generation or is he our enemy? Like the Jews said back in the first century. And you understand that a Messiah is a deliverer, a deliverer from sin. Uh, not, not a physical deliverer, but a spiritual deliverer. Um, and what is an enemy? An enemy is one who opposes, persecutes, hates, judges, kills, and accuses. Jesus didn't do any of that. Jesus didn't come to oppose, to persecute, uh, to hate, to judge, to kill, to accuse, to destroy uh, one's life with misery. He didn't come for that. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. And so Jesus was not an enemy. He was Messiah based on his testimony and what he had done in those days. What does Jesus say about himself as Messiah? Um, basically, he says in John 4.26 that he is the Messiah. In uh, John 18.36-37, John 10.30, John 14.9, and Matthew 26.64. In all of those passages, he claims to be a Messiah. John 10.30, he says, I and the Father are one. Right? In John 14.9, he says, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. In John um, 4.26, he says, I... Um, because he was talking to the women at the well, he says, I who, I am he, you know, I am Messiah. The women have said that, um, you know, mes the writing of the prophets have said that Messiah was coming. And um, and in the passage, he turned to the woman of Samaritan, the Samaritan woman, and says, I'm the one that, um, that that passage is talking about. Question number seven, what did the Jews say about Jesus and how else did they respond? Um, John 10.31 and John 8.59 and John 11.8 says that they picked up stone to stone him. When he made that claim in John 10.30 that I, I and the Father are one, and that he was attributing equality with God, um, basically their response was to kill him for his death, because to them that was blasphemy. Question 8. What if Israel was wrong and Jesus was the Messiah whom God the Father uh, sent? What if Israel was wrong? Well, John 1.41, the disciples said, we have found him. We have found Messiah. Uh, Romans 11, 1 through 32, basically, Paul writes about uh, how Israel was given a spirit of stupor uh, because of unbelief. And so it, Israel was put aside uh, while God reached out to the Gentiles. Uh, so uh, I believe that uh, what, this, what the text is, is teaching is, is that um, Israel was wrong uh, and that uh, Jesus was the Messiah whom God the Father sent. But to the Jews, they're still waiting for Messiah to come. Um, you can read that in Romans 11, 1 through 32. Uh, number nine, what will happen to those who trusted in Jesus as their Messiah by faith? John 3, 16 through 21, John 5, 24, and 1 John 5, 9 through 13 says that they will obtain eternal life. Um, they, will, they will enter into heaven and be with the Father. Um, what about uh, Question 10, what will happen to those who did not choose uh, receive and accept Jesus as Messiah in their lives. John 3, 18-21, Acts 17, 30-31, and Revelations 21, 8 says that they will be judged. Um, Revelations 21, 8, they will be thrown into the lake of fire. Acts, 30, Acts 17, 30-31 says that um, God has already appointed um, a time of, uh, a day of judgment and a man to, to pass that judgment. John 3, 6, 18 says uh, that they've already been judged. Uh, question number eleven: uh, Do any of the other, do any of the Gentile nations um, who are under Satan uh, support Israel in denouncing Jesus as the Messiah? Uh, yes, there are other nations who who 
who practiced um, false religions, Islam, Buddhism, Confucianism, Zoroastra, Zoroastrianism, and all sorts of other religions in the world um, that were there in, um, in Israel at the time, and of course outside of Israel, who opposed uh, the Messianic role of Christ and denounced Jesus as Messiah. And of course the Roman Empire um, denounced Jesus as Messiah, Pilate and Herod, uh, the Roman centurions and the Roman cohort, the Italian cohort, and all of those uh, people um, denounced Jesus. You go back to Matthew uh, 26, uh, uh, Mark 15, and Luke 23, those passages of scripture basically walks you through the whole process of what Jesus went through. And uh, there was a mob there who just rejected him. And so yes, there were other nations, Gentile nations, who saw him performing miracles, but also they rejected him when the time came for his rejection to fulfill the scriptures. Uh, question 12, is the Messianic role of Christ the most important role that he has come to fulfill over all the other prophetic roles he has fulfilled? Uh, yes, the Messianic role of Christ is the most important because that is the role that will grant man entrance into the kingdom of God. Um, and so once uh, the world understands that he is the king that was promised and he is a spiritual deliverer and that he fulfills so much of Old Testament prophecy, uh, then, yeah, that was the most important. First John 2, 1 through 2 says that he was the propitiation. Um, he was the advocate um, that the Lord had given to us uh, for the propitiation of our sins. Question 13, is the second coming of Christ the return of the Messiah uh, to redeem his church since the first coming of Messiah was to establish his church? Uh, yes, the second coming of Christ uh, the second coming of Christ, the return of the Messiah, is to redeem his church, is to um, rapture his church, uh, because his first coming was to establish it. Uh, the establishment of the church, remember, is, is just basically removing sinners out from the clutches of Satan and from under sin and, uh, and, and cleansing them with his blood. Um, first Thessalonians 4, 15 through 18 basically says that um, Paul writes to the church of Thessalonica and he says to them that and this is about the rapture when he comes back he's coming on, on the clouds with the angels and, and he's going to call the church to himself and when he calls the church to himself um, and they're going to meet him in the air and, and so that's the return of Messiah so Messiah is going to return to redeem his church to rapture his church so this is the second coming you can also read about it in Matthew 24 um, question 14 do modern Israelite Jews still believe and teach the coming of Messiah and the falsehood of Christ in taking the claim to be Messiah. Um, yes, um, modern Israelite Jews today, Israel today, still believe and teach that Messiah is coming. They don't believe that Messiah has already come. We, the church, believe Messiah has already come. But the Jews today are still teaching that Messiah is coming. And um, the falsehood of Christ. They're teaching that Messiah is coming, but Christ is false. Um, and in, in the fact that he had made the claim to be Messiah. And so what he received in the First Testament, the crucifixion, was justly due to him. You know, he got exactly what he deserved. Um, question 15. Uh, what did the apostles teach regarding Christ's uh, messiahship? Uh, Acts 2, 22 through 36, uh, Matthew 16, 16, John 20, 28, John 20, 31, James 1, 2, and James 2, uh, 1, Colossians 1, 18, Philippians 2, 10 through 11. Um, Basically, these different apostles acknowledge, uh, Peter acknowledged Christ as, as the Messiah who, who, who died and, and was not decayed, and was not, who, who did not remain in the grave, um, and, and, and was not decayed, but he rose again, and, and he rose up to, he, he died, he rose again, and then he ascended up to the Father to sit at the right hand of the Father. Um, John 20:28 20, records Thomas, Thomas' testimony, where he turns to Jesus and he says, My Lord and my God. Uh, so he considered Jesus Lord and he considered Jesus God on account of um, his resurrection. Um, in John 20, 31, again, John now, the apostle, acknowledges that there is so much that Jesus had done that, you know, he couldn't possibly write down everything that he had done and he was Lord and he was the Messiah. So he acknowledged him that way. James uh, even acknowledged him as, as Lord and Messiah. Uh, Paul acknowledged him as the head of the church in Colossians 1. 18 and in, in, in Philippians 2, he says, Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess to the glory of God the Father. And so, uh, Peter and James and John and Thomas and, and Paul, all of these apostles acknowledge his uh, messianic role in, over the church. Uh, number 16, 
Uh, does the church today still receive Christ as their Messiah daily? Daily men and women and children enter into the kingdom of God believing that Christ is the, the way, the truth, and the life. He says that I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but through me. Um, and so daily, uh, eternally, you know, to be born again, one must receive Jesus as Messiah, or else they, they, they won't enter into the kingdom. Um, number 17, is the theme of all scripture the Messiahship of Jesus for all humanity uh, to save all men from the Adamic curse? Yes, the theme of all scripture, from Genesis all the way to Revelation, the theme of scripture, the main theme of scripture is the messi messianic role of Christ in saving um, all of humanity from the Adamic curse, from the, from the curse of Adam. Uh, that is Genesis chapter 3. What he does on the cross uh, cleanses uh, what took place in, in, in the Garden of Eden. Uh, what they demanded at uh, understanding uh, fulfills. So that's why the scripture says he fulfills many things. Right? Just one coming of Christ fulfills all of the prophecies and the demands of man. Uh, to be freed from sin, to be freed from tyranny, to be freed from Satan, uh, to be forgiven and to enter into the kingdom. Um, his coming just at one time, uh, just, it's sort of like a summary uh, of, uh, of everything that needed to be done for man to be right with God and to enter the kingdom. Christ did. Number 18, where is Messiah now? Acts 2.33 and Colossians 3.1 says he's at the right hand of the Father. Um, Number 19, where did Messiah come from the first time, and where is he coming from the second time? John 17, 24 says that he's coming from heaven, um, because that's where he was, that's where he was at, when he was uh, being glorified prior to the, uh, prior to the creation of, of heaven and earth, uh, where was Messiah? Uh, in heaven with the, with the Lord, with the Father. Um, and so where is he now, where is he going to come from when he comes back? From heaven, where he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. Um, our last question is, if we accept Jesus as Messiah by faith, what will happen to our lives um, as opposed to if we rejected him? Um, we've already uh, said that in 1 John 5 and John 3.18, that if we receive Jesus as Messiah, we will enter into the kingdom and we will receive eternal life and we will be forgiven uh, by the Father for the Adamic curse. But if we don't, then we've already been judged and we will enter et into eternal judgment. Understand that the answer to these questions um, you can you can go into a deeper study if you go through the scriptures and, and, and read all the passages that I've quoted you, um, and you can probably look up um, you know notes that Christian scholars have put together in regards to the messianic role of Christ, or you can go into uh, the, into the uh, the teaching of the rabbis and see what they say against the messianic role of Christ and, um, in Judaism, where they stand against Jesus completely and blast blast him away as an imposter and as a blasphemer. Um, perhaps the messianic role of Christ was uh, to correct the decision that the Jews had made or fulfill the request of, of the Jews in, in, in 1 Samuel 8, 1 through 2. Perhaps that's what it, it, it was. I believe it was. That it was, it was a correction. Um, they asked for a king. God came down in the form of a man and, and gave them the king that they were looking for. But they, were, they didn't get a king with a crown. They got a, a king with a crown of thorns um, to take away the sins of the world, not to take away the tyranny of Rome or any other nation. Um, and that was fulfilled in John 4, 25, 26. So it was requested in 1 Samuel for the king to come, and it was um, and, and it was fulfilled in John 4, 25, 26. Um, basically, them asking for a human king like the nations uh, dishonored God. It was a dishonor to God, and, and, God, it, and it brought God down. Um, and uh, God had to redeem himself uh, in the form of man, and so he came in the form of Christ. And so the request was made, and he really didn't want to come down, but he did, you know, to, to fulfill the request. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given to you, seek and you shall find and knock, and it will be given to you. And so they asked, therefore he came down in the form of a man, and he walked the streets. Remember how Jesus presented himself. He didn't present himself like Herod did, um, or like Caesar or Pilate. He came with nothing. Um, and yet he left with everything. Um, if we were to give a, an outline to this uh, message today, we would have said, uh, we would have given a, a 10 to 12 point outline. First being uh, the error of coveting, right? The error of coveting. The Jews coveted for a, uh, 
for Messiah because, like the passage says in 1 Samuel, they kept on asking uh, for a king like the, the kings of the nations. Secondly, the prophecy of Messiah, um, Isaiah, Isaiah 9, uh, the arrival of Messiah, that will be Luke chapter 2 or Matthew uh, 1, uh, the uh, manifestation of Messiah, that will be the Gospels, all four of the Gospels show the manifestation of Messiah. Number five, the denial of Messiah, um, that's the Jews in uh, John 10, 30, uh, John 10, 30, 31, where they denied him and picked up stones to stone him. Um, number six, the, the condemnation of Messiah is when they went to arrest him. Uh, they arrested him and brought him before Pilate and Herod, and they, they condemned him for being a blasphemer. Uh, number seven, that the death and redemption of Messiah, basically Messiah died on the cross and redeemed humanity from their sins when we believed in him. Number seven is the, the resurrection of Messiah, Matthew 28, uh, verses 1 and 2, I believe, uh, and, and so on. Those passages covers the, the resurrection of Messiah. Number nine, the departure of Messiah. You can get a, a Acts chapter 1, I believe, the first 11 verses basically uh, gives you a... a a description of how he uh, climbed on a cloud and, and he ascended up to heaven. Um, number nine, the uh, promised return of Messiah. Um, that's Matthew 24. Messiah is coming back. And uh, 1 Thessalonians 4. And um, first, yes, 1 Thessalonians 4. And then the uh, continued reign of Messiah. The continued reign of Messiah. Um, the continued reign of Messiah is in Revelations 20. Uh, and in, in, in how he's going to reign for a thousand years. And the uh, present position of Messiah right now, the internal position of Messiah is uh, is that of in, through the Holy Spirit. And so Messiah is where right now, though he sits at the right hand of the Father, yet he gives us uh, the Holy Spirit um, to seal us and to abide in us so that we know that we are his and that he has fulfilled his messianic role in our individual lives. So Messiah has come, he stayed, um, he, he corrected uh, the coveting of the Jews, um, he fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, he came, he, uh, he manifested the power uh, and, and, uh, and the glory of, of, of heaven, he was denied, he was condemned, he died, he redeemed uh, humanity, he, he resurrected, he departed, um, it, he, he promised, and of course he promised the disciples, the church, that he would return, uh, he uh, and, and the scripture says that he will continue his reign, right? He's been reigning over the church for 2,000 years. And then his, his position now is internal, not only in heaven, but also internally through the Holy Spirit. So now the question is, so what, right? If Messiah has come and all these things have happened, so what is the point of us uh, knowing and understanding uh, whether or not Christ was Messiah or enemy? Right? Is Jesus Christ the Messiah of our lives, or is he the enemy of our lives? If the, the scriptures teach that he was, um, he was the deliverer, then that means he's on our side. He wants us to be saved. He is not our enemy. Uh, he may be the enemy of the Jews because they didn't understand him, because God had given them a spirit of stupor, and only a few out of Israel were redeemed. Right? Only a few out of Israel were redeemed and were given the spirit and the Holy Spirit and the mind to understand who he was. Not all of Israel was redeemed. Only a few. Only the chosen few. Um, um, and so that, that's all basically um, the Jews could have done with the information. They couldn't understand it. Um, and so today, the reason why it matters, it's, it's his stand in us. The stand that after we receive him as Lord, it's the stance that he takes in us that makes us different. Um, it's, the, it's the effect that Messiah has on us and in us. Uh, we become sons of God. We become temples of the Holy Spirit. Um, we become holy people. Like it says in 1 Peter 1, 15-16, we become the priesthood of God. 1 Peter 2, 9, we become adopted children of God. And we become sanctified vessels. We become free from sin. Man who do not understand that will still be lusting after our flesh. We'll still be lusting after our bodies because that's the condemnation that the, that they have incurred at um, under Adam. But if we receive Messiah, God will take away that lust and that desire for sin in the flesh, 
And if we believe in Messiah, he will make us into sons of God, temples of the Spirit, holy people, a priesthood of God, an adopted child of God, and a sanctified vessel for God's usage. And so, if you believe in Messiah, this is what God is going to do through you in Christ Jesus by faith. For without faith it is impossible to please him. So God in Hebrews 3, 7 is calling all men today, right? B both in those days when the book of Hebrews was written, he was calling them to, to salvation. But right now God is calling you to salvation and saying believe in Jesus as Messiah. Because if you do, this is what's going to happen in your life. You're going to receive eternal life. But as I've already noted, you will become sons of God, temples of the Spirit, holy people, priesthood, adopted sons of God, and you will become sanctified in Christ Jesus. Um, Father, I want to pray in the name of Jesus that you will deliver these people who are listening to this video and pray that they will receive Jesus this Christmas, this holiday season, as their Messiah, as their King, as their Deliverer, as their Lord. Let God may we go back into the Scriptures to understand all that your Word has taught in regards to the coming of Jesus. For his coming has set men free from their sin. May they receive him, may they adore him like Romans 10, 9 and 10 say, may they believe in, in him with all their hearts and confess him with their mouth so that they may be saved. This I pray in Jesus' name.